If you use iMovie for making your videos, using the Ken Burns effect is something you should really master. Ken Burns effect is one of the great creative tools provided by iMovie. If you've ever watched one of Ken Burns' documentaries, say of the Civil War, you're familiar with the Ken Burns effect. It's basically just panning and zooming inside of a still photograph. I'll show you not just the mechanics of the Ken Burns effect, but how to use it creatively to make your videos special. The Ken Burns effect is found under the cropping tool. You can either crop to fit, fit, or use the Ken Burns effect. Once you have the Ken Burns effect enabled, you'll see two rectangles on the preview screen. There you can change the panning and zooming parameters of both the start and the end view of your still photo to your heart's content. You can do this by either dragging the window or changing the corners. You can also hit the little up-down arrow that reverses the start and the end point. The most common use of the Ken Burns effect is a modest zoom across multiple stills. This adds visual interest to your video. iMovie will automatically add this and vary it from frame to frame to retain the viewer's visual interest. Here's how to add multiple photos to the timeline. Mark them in your My Media window. You can do that by command clicking. Then just drag them down to the timeline and they'll all come in. If you need to go back and make changes later, you can select them with a rectangle box. In this case, I made a slight mistake by also selecting the transition of the title, so I just command clicked those out of the selection. I then go up and change the duration in the information window of all four of those to five seconds. The Ken Burns effect is phenomenal for panorama shots. The nice thing about it is you can get a nice smooth pan across your panorama that you couldn't accomplish with a handheld camera. This works best with landscape photos where nothing is moving. On the contrary, if you have a setting where something is moving, like water in a waterfall, that's really best done with a video shot because a still shot, it'll be glaringly obvious that you've frozen time with a still photograph, whereas the video will retain the interest of the motion. A nice trick is to combine the slide transition with the pan. This gives a really great sense of continuity. If you go back to the beginning of this scene, you'll see the image, the panorama, slide in from the right to the left, and then the pan using the Ken Burns effect continues that motion. Another common use of the Ken Burns effect is to show detail in high-res imagery. This is particularly useful for objects that don't occupy the full frame. So in this case, I'm going to zoom in on the avocados and then pan over to the delicious fish taco that's immediately next to it, staying zoomed in while I do the pan. A little known use of the Ken Burns effect is with video. In this example, the first set of frames shows a bird flying by, and the second set of frames shows the same bird being tracked using the Ken Burns effect with the video file. Another common use of the Ken Burns effect is to zoom out from a detail in the photo to show surprising context. In this case, it's not obvious when you're zoomed in that I'm jumping up and down on the Cassidy Arch in Canyonlands National Park until the zoom backs off far enough where you can see the whole arch. Last but not least, you can emulate zooming in like in an airplane approach into a part of the photo. First you zoom in, then you pan up and do a modest zoom to emulate the motion that an airplane would do. In this example, I'll show you how to do multiple pans and zooms within a file. We start by setting our Ken Burns cropping of our initial frame. So we want to start out with the picture fully zoomed out. So we take the corners and move them all the way out to the end of the frame. Then we select the ending position of what we want to zoom into. Next, we copy and paste that particular frame over again, that particular clip over again. This will copy and paste not only the image itself, but the Ken Burn setting. So now that we've completely duplicated that, we'll switch the beginning and the end so that we're now starting where the last pan or zoom left off. 
and now we can just change our ending position to the new place we want to pan to. Let's see that again. Copy, paste, and now the second clip has been copied and pasted. We switch the beginning and end points, then select the end, and then position where we want to pan to within the image. Now let's play it back and see what that looks like. We'll zoom in on the avocado, pan up to the taco, and then pan down to the salsa. Another nice use of the Ken Burns effect is with the background of a picture-in-picture -picture or cutaway image. In this particular case, I have a vertical video file that's playing in front of a still image of the Grand Canyon that is being panned and zoomed using the Ken Burns effect. This is a really great way to extend the frame of a vertical picture or video clip. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something from this video that will make your videos more creative using the Ken Burns effect and iMovie.